Alright, today I'm going to show you how to grow your sourdough starter. To start off, I just had about a tablespoon or two of starter, so my measurements for my flour and water started off pretty small. I started with two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of water. Mixing that together, you really want a consistency that is a little bit on the thicker side. You definitely do not want runny starter. Then after a few hours, I could tell that the starter had grown some. It now is covering the bottom of the mason jar where it wasn't before. So for my second feed, I'm going to do two tablespoons of flour and one tablespoon of water, really just to keep that consistency with the starter. Your starter really needs to be a little thinner than like a glue consistency, but it definitely does not need to be runny. You can see I had to add just a little bit more water because the consistency wasn't quite right. And you'll figure it out as you go. So now we are way later in the day and you can see there's just a little bit of growth. We've moved up just a little bit to that next little line on the mason jar, but you can see some bubbles starting to form. For my third feed, I did four tablespoons of flour and three tablespoons of water. I increased my increment slightly since I have a little bit more starter in my jar. And I'm going to mix that up. Again, checking my consistency, making sure that I'm not too liquidy, but not too solid. My fourth feed, four tablespoons of flour and three tablespoons of water. And there's probably anywhere between six hours to 10 hours in between each feed. It really just depends on what the starter is looking like. And the smell of the starter also gives a good indication of if it needs to be fed or not. If your starter smells very sour, that means that it is hungry and you need to feed it. If your starter smells a little bit more like flour or yeast, then it's doing its job. All right, so we're on our next feed and you can see there was a lot of growth in between this feed. Um, you can see that last mark that I made and how much it had grown. Again, you see some bubbles starting to form on top of the starter. You can see some bigger bubbles starting to form on the sides. All of that is showing that my measurements with my flour and my water are working. I'm moving in the right direction. My consistency, my texture, all of that is working really well. So I'm going to continue on to my next feed. This is feed number five. Four tablespoons of flour and three tablespoons of water. We're gonna mix that up again and see what happens. It's also important to make sure that you keep the jar covered. It still needs to get some air, so if you use a mason jar, make sure you're not sealing the lid onto the jar, but you can you know, just put a towel on top or the lid itself. All right, marking the jar one last time. And this time I'm going to let it sit overnight, I believe. Yes, overnight, um, and you can really see the difference that has happened. So it does not take long. Once your starter is active and really working, things will take off very quickly. So you wanna see lots of bubbles like we have there. Again, that yeasty smell is what you're looking for and you are good to go. We have enough starter to make our bread. So my next video will be of me making sourdough bread. Make sure you tune in for that one. And if you like this video and want to see another that isn't so sped up and maybe a little bit more detail, let me know in the comments and I would be happy to do another video. But in the meantime, let me know if you do sourdough bread, if you've tried it, if 
you were successful, if it was hard for you, let me know and I would love to be able to chat about it because it's definitely something that I have learned more about the last few months and I am happy to share what I have learned. Enjoy the rest of your day and make sure you like and subscribe. See you in the next video.